patience is your most profitable characteristic when it comes to trading the financial markets. Even better than that, I feel that understanding central banks, in particular central bank divergence, is one of your most profitable uh, characteristics that you can adopt when it comes to what? When it comes to trading the financial markets, right? So in today's video, uh, we're gonna go over this, the Federal Reserve's summary of economic projections, right? So last night we had, uh, well, last night, according to South African time, we had uh, the Fed meeting, right? And obviously they delivered a 0.5% or a 50 basis point interest rate cut. And in that interest rate cut, markets were obviously expecting that in terms of that it was heavily priced in but the justification of it didn't really make sense right and why what what do i mean by justification of it well markets were expecting that if the fed delivers a 50 basis point cut then it will be accompanied by a dovish message right because that is essentially this the 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 signal that it would be sending that okay we are delivering a very big cut or what is considered to be a very big cut and we are doing that because we are fearful of something maybe it's recessionary fears or maybe there's something that we that we can foresee that is there will be an issue ahead right uh that was essentially the market's uh thought process or line of thinking around the time but in essence he came out with a very hawkish message a hawkish cut essentially he was not dovish uh, he pushed back against the fact that this is how they're going to do things moving forward. He did not. He pushed back against that. He also obviously mentioned that the economy is doing good. The economy is, is in a relatively s strong position. Inflation is falling. Uh, but in essence, what they do not want to see is further weakness in the labor market. Right. And obviously, he kept on emphasizing further weakness in the labor market. Right. But in essence, what I concluded from that is essentially, like I said, a hawkish cut, but in essence, which means that we need to pay more attention to the actual what? To the actual unemployment data, the actual unemployment rate. But before we continue, uh, let, me, let us just look at a trade that I have running uh, based on what I was ex anticipating or expecting. Of course, this is just AUD CAD. Uh, I still have AUD CAD running, but I've taken partial profits, as you can see. Uh, today in the morning, just a side, to sidetrack a bit, in the morning we had uh, unemployment data for Australia, uh, which came in relatively on the positive side, or good, if I may call it. Uh, so as you can see, we just had that further rally higher in AUD CAD. But the trade that I want to take you guys to uh, is uh, silver. Uh, not Yeah, silver. Silver. So I want us to look at silver, right? Uh, this is a trade that I've been... Well, I've been in this trade for some time and obviously it lines up with what I'm talking about. Uh, the fact that patience is your most profitable uh, characteristic when it comes to trading. But also, most importantly, understanding central banks. I am in this trade because of what I was anticipating for the Fed. That of course, if the Fed is going to cut, uh, then that should essentially be positive for risk assets. And obviously it will benefit gold as well as silver, right? And obviously we do have the geopolitical side of things, even though that is not a big driver at the moment. But if uh, tensions escalate uh, further, as, you, as you've seen uh, in the past, essentially this, this week, uh, between Israel and, 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 and Hezbollah, if those escalate even further, then obviously we're going to see silver and gold actually start to push higher, right? So this is how I positioned myself to be in this trade. And that is why I'm do I don't want to say I'm comfortable holding, but the reason I'm to a certain degree comfortable holding is because I understand what the Fed is doing and what the economy is doing as a whole, right? So this is the trade that I'm in. And now let us go back to the summary of economic projections so that we have an idea of what is happening, right? So when it comes to the summary of economic projections, so here's how we simply how here's how to simply understand this, right? So as you can see, and underneath it says June projections. So the 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 second line, those were the those are the previous projections that they had in June. And then the, the first line or the line above that is the current projections, the ones that we released yesterday, right? So as you can clearly see that we have, un, in, they, they forecast GDP a bit lower at 2%. Currently, GDP is at 
3.1%. Uh, that's the annual annual growth uh, of GDP, which is relatively strong, relatively good, right? Unemployment, they forecast unemployment higher from 4% to 4.4%. In Unemployment is currently at 4.2%. But here's what I need you to look at. The previous projections or the June projections had shown unemployment at 4.2% in 2025. Where is, where is unemployment currently sitting? At 4.2%. So their projections for 2025 had been met in 2024, right? So this is probably one of the reasons why we are seeing, I'm not saying it is the reason, but one of the reasons why the Fed kept on stressing about the labor markets, that they are doing this to ensure that the labor market remains at the current level at which it, at, at which it is at. They do not want to see the labor market deteriorate even further, right? So... That is what we got from the labor market. And like I said, currently unemployment is at 4.2%. So moving forward, if unemployment jumps to 4.4 or even 4.5, then we know that we can expect what? More of a dovish message from the Federal Reserve. Then if you look at PCE inflation, which is their in, in, uh, preferred measure of inflation, the previous uh, projections for June were 2.6 in 2024, and two point now they they've been revised lower to two point three. Remember in June they were actually revised higher. Uh, now they've been revised lower to two point three. Where does PCE actually sit right now? So PCE right now is sitting at two point five percent. So it is now above their projection. So that means that if PCE because we're getting uh, PCE data by the end of this month. So if PC, PCE data actually comes in lower. Uh, or actually falls to 2.3%, then that only just what? Uh, endorses more interest rate cuts from the Fed, right? And as you can see, the core PCE actually was also revised lower from 2.8 to 2.6. Where does the core PCE actually sit right now? So the core PCE is currently or has been stable at 2.6% for the past three months. So it is exactly where they projected to be moving forward, right? So if it falls at the end of this month, and then maybe it comes in at 2.5, then obviously we can expect what? More weakness for the dollar because the markets will price in that the Fed will continue cutting rates, especially after they delivered a what would consider what would consider a big interest rate cut, right? That is one of the key things that you need to pay attention to, or this is how you need to use the summary of economic projections to your benefit right and this is where it all essentially begins with understanding central banks because this is essentially you can in 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 not directly or or but when i say directly i mean not, it is not written in stone that this is how things need to be but in essence this is giving you an idea of the central bank's goals that this is our goals this is our goal for pce this is our goal for for core PCE, for unemployment, for GDP, and then as you can, the last line, which is the federal funds rate. Uh, as you can see, in June, it was revised higher from 4.6 to 4 to 5.1. Now it's been revised lower to 4.4 at the end of 2024. That means that it, that's probably 0 0.25 or 25 basis points worth of cuts in November as well as December, the remaining two meetings in 2024. But if inflation falls more than what is expected, uh, unemployment, or rises above 4.4 percent maybe jumps to 4.5 or even jumps to 4.4 from 4.2 then that could increase what the probability that the fed delivers another 50 basis point uh cut right especially because in that hawkish statement hawkish press conference essentially what he kept on emphasizing on was the labor the labor market that they do not want to see more weakness in the labor market or they want to keep the labor market at the current level which is regarded as being strong right uh, so this is just what i wanted to share with regards to the importance of understanding central banks in as much as it is important for you to be patient because that is one of the most p profitable characteristics but it all starts with understanding central bank because at that point it becomes not easier but simpler for you to be more patient but if you do not know why you are patient, then it becomes difficult for you to actually be patient. So moving forward, it's all about lining up the data that you keep on getting to what I said previously that this is, you can view this as the central bank's goals. So now are they meeting their goals or are they deviating away from their goals? If they overshooting their goals, then that means that they are more likely to move more aggressively. 
by that if an if inflation is, if an inflation is below their projections and unemployment is above their projections but if they are undershooting their goals inflation starts to pick high to push higher unemployment starts to fall then in that regard we do not expect the fed to be uh, more aggressive in terms of their interest rate cuts or to maybe they might even hold interest rate cuts if that scenario were to play out right so now you have more faith in a game plan moving forward and now you have a reference point that okay every single data that is coming out this is what i need to make reference uh reference to but most importantly you also need to update yourself with what the actual fed members are actually saying during during their interviews or during their, their speech that they would actually have from time to time right but in essence this is just to once again emphasize the importance of understanding central banks because like i said in one of the videos central banks are like the captain of the ship and the ship is the economy and they will steer the economy uh in a certain direction and obviously they have objectives they have a, a destination that they want to reach and if they are fail if they are falling short of that destination then that won't be good right so this is the video that i wanted to share with you guys uh and moving forward like i said just pay attention to the data that we keep on getting and how it actually and how it could potentially impact the fed's next decision because remember markets are always moving based on future expectations markets are forward looking if you're still focused on what's happening now you might you might get left behind you should now turn your eyes to what you expect in the future to what you expect in uh, not expect anticipate to happen in the fourth quarter because we are moving into the fourth quarter right now right so if you found value from this video as always like the video uh if you have not yet subscribe do subscribe and obviously share the video with someone who might benefit from the video and until the next video guys uh cheers from my side